2022. My name is Prasad Kanga. I'll be talking about application level backups with Canister and Copia. About me, uh, my name is Prasad Ganga. I work as a tech lead at InfraCloud Technologies, Pune. Uh, my main interests are uh, Kubernetes, Go, and open source. Uh, I'm also the maintainer of WordCube and Canister. Besides work, I also like trekking and playing cricket. About today's session, I'll be talking about data management in general, the challenges we face, and how Canister framework helps overcoming those challenges and uh, how Canister helps protecting your application data on Kubernetes. Cool. So when we talk about data operations, undoubtedly uh, data management or disaster recovery is uh, one of the challenging problem we, 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 we need to solve. Um, when it comes to Kubernetes or applications on Kubernetes, the problem becomes more challenging because um, there are lots of moving parts. Um, your data management basically depends on the infrastructure you're using, the kind of application uh, you have deployed. And if you talk about the general approach approaches uh, we see uh, about data management, the first one is uh, storage-centric snapshots, where uh, the underlying file system provides a, provides a way to snapshot the volume. It is crash consistent, but obviously not. Uh, they, they, they don't don't care about if the they don't basically interact with data services. Uh, so that's why there is second approach people follow, which is storage centric, along with data service hooks. Uh, for example, some application uh, needs freeze and unfreeze data before you perform snapshot. So this can be you know uh, some people follows story centric approach or snapshot approach with, with some hooks that allows them freeze and freeze the data data service. Uh, third one is the data centric approach where we use uh, database utilities like MySQL dump, Postgres dump um, to, to uh, snapshot the data. And then uh, there is application centric where we use multiple strategies in collaboration to uh, ma to manage the data of application. So obviously, no, there is no single approach which uh, uh, there is no single solution to this problem because the data management or uh, the backups depends on a lot of factors like the, the infrastructure you're using. Uh, there are different provisioners, uh, different types of application. Each application has their own way of data management. Right. Uh, so even if you talk about just backups, there are different ways of taking back backups. You can do volume snapshot, logical backups, uh, provider-based API calls like RDS snapshot, um, or, or you can call operator APIs to perform snapshot. Then uh, application might have their specific concerns, like um, application might need to scale up, scale down, uh, before and after the backup and restore, uh, again freeze and unfreeze the data, and then your backup might have a different uh, different target requirements like different types of object store. It could be vendor specific as well. So, so when t when you talk about protecting uh, stateful application data on Kubernetes, there are a lot of things we need to consider, and there 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 won't be a single workflow which we can follow for all the apps. So ideally, uh, the ideal, ideal solution would be to have a framework that allows us uh, combining different approaches and have build a workflow that, that can be executed to perform application level, level backups. So that's where Canister comes into the picture. It's an open source framework uh, to manage data at application level. Uh, the way uh, the, the way it is achieved, achieved is using blueprints. Uh, so Canister has something called blueprints, which uh, you can define to build workflow, and then uh, you can execute that workflow. We will talk about it more in details. So talking about Kubernetes framework, sorry, Canister framework components, there are uh, four main components. One is 
canister controller blueprint action set and profile excuse me canister controller is, is the basically the custom controller uh, responsible for managing uh, performing operation based on the cr creation so um, the different level of crs which are in, involved in the community canister framework is blueprint action set and profile blueprint is basically where you define the workflow for backup and restore or delete operations um, action set is the basically trigger kind of to uh, trigger the actions defined in the blueprint profile is the cr where you define destination for your backups or in case of restore the source for your restores and to manage all these crs uh, there is the, you, you obviously need a custom controller which is a canister controller uh, which take which performs some operations based on the uh, cr creations then uh, there are two tooling uh, clis uh, canister provides one is cancuttle another one is candle cancuttle is to uh, can helps you creating the crs like action set and profiles can do used uh, within container to push your push and pull data from the object stores of your choice all right so uh, this is how the blueprint looks like basically so blueprint consists of actions list of actions so in this blueprint this is the blueprint for mongodb application um, in the action you could see there is a backup action and then in each action, there will there could be multiple phases. So in this case, we will only see one phase. Um, phase consists of function and arguments. So function, um, the canister function defines how the commands or whatever, uh, how the operation is going to take place. In case of cube task function, uh, what canister does is it, it runs a container with the given image and execute these commands inside that container. If you have requirement like uh, you want to exec into a container and then execute command, you can use cube exec function. So there are a list of uh, canister function depending on your use case you can use. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, it more in, in the next few slides. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is like in the, each phase, you define how you want to perform those operations and you basically um, uh, basically build the workflow. Uh, this is the example of action set CR. In action set, you basically, uh, as I said, action set is kind of a trigger for the action defined in the blueprint. Um, so in the action set, you define your reference blueprint and the action you want to run with defined within that blueprint, right? And you also pass the object reference uh, on which uh, the blueprint action will be performed and then profile uh, profile holds information about the object store where you want to pull uh, pull the push the backup data or pull the data from uh, you pass the profile reference and once the action set is created a canister you know runs some operations and then based on the operation status it, it updates the status uh, in the action set status field uh, so in this case, you can see um, it has set some output artifacts and that is the path to which the backup artifacts are pushed. Uh, this is an example of profile. Um, profile holds the credentials and the object store information. Like in this case, uh, we are using S3 compliant uh, object store, uh, object store of S3 compliant uh, location type. Uh, with a bucket, a canister backup, and uh, these are the credentials defined to interact with that bucket. Cool. All right, so this is how in theory we have talked about how canister works. Now it's time for a demo. So we'll be, um, we will be showcasing how uh, PostgreSQL uh, application can be, um, you know, protected using canister. So, all right. So I have this uh, Kubernetes cluster running in which I have, I have created a Postgres namespace. 
and in postgres then face i have, de I have deployed a, a postgres application these are the running pods so what we'll do first we'll try we will we'll add some data into this database so using kubectl exec So we are under the pod and now we'll try to create some database like uh, let's create test database cool add some data and let us create a com table named company and add few entries Add one more entry. Cool. So let's list down all the entries. Okay. So now we have two entries in the database, right? Um, now let's perform backup on Postgres. So I have already installed um, canister operator. In, in canister namespace in the operator is up and running next thing we'll be create is the blueprint so before creating blueprint let's once go through the blueprint uh, this is the blueprint for protecting postgres application um, yeah so if you go through the actions in actions we are defined one backup action and in action there are multiple phases in this case, uh, there is single phase for backup action. Um, in this phase, we are using kubetask function. That means it will run a new pod with this image and will execute the commands defined here. So in the commands, you can see we are uh, building the host name from the object past uh, and we are executing pg dump all command and then we are using can do location push to push uh, the dump to, to the object store. And then we are setting the output artifact, uh, which is basically the path to which we have pushed uh, the data. And then in the restore phase, we are fetching the data from, from the location we have defined during backup and basically then again running PSQL command to restore restore the data and in delete action we are just deleting the uh, the term push to they are pushed to the object store cool all right so let's create the blueprint in the <coughs> controller namespace by controller namespace i mean the namespace in which we have defined uh, we have installed the canister operator all right the next step is to create a profile to uh, specify the object store information. All right, so it will verify if the past information is correct, if the bucket exists in that region, and we'll create the profile. All right, uh, next step is to perform backup. So for performing backup, we'll be again, uh, we'll be basically creating an action set and if you go to the command, so we are specifying backup action from Postgres VP blueprint, which we had created, and we are passing uh, the Postgres stateful set as, as a reference object or on which the action will be performed, and then the uh, profile name, which is S3 profile, some random thing. Cool. So that is how we have created action set, which will perform backup action. We can check the status using kubectl describe action set command. All right. So in the events, you can see uh, the status is complete, and if you see the artifacts. It's saying the backup has been pushed to this location. Let's quickly verify that. 
Okay, so we have this. Excuse me. Yeah. So the bucket we we had used was canister demo inside that. You can see at this path there is a file uh, which. To which the uh, to which canister has pushed the data. Cool. All right. So now we are done with backup. Uh, now let's do disaster. Let's delete some uh, delete the database we had just we had created. We will again execute. I will do cube exec. Sorry, cube cuttle exec. Um, execute cube cuttle exec command, and then get the PSQL CLI. And then, uh, so we have okay, cool. So we have we had created test database. Just just drop the database. All right. Now we no longer have test database. Cool. Now let's uh, do restore. Um, so the for restore we have to find the restore point uh, that was the action set we had created for backup okay so let's get the restore point uh, all right this is the restore point to which we want to restore uh, our application okay so we'll be creating again action set but in the action set will be passing the restore action okay um, so instead of passing whole information again you can just refer the rest of the information like blueprint and the artifacts from the uh, backup backup action set so we'll use from argument we'll pass the reference to to the backup action set and this is how it will create restore action set we can get the status using kubectl describe action set cool so the status is complete let's again go into the database pod and verify if the data is restored correctly so ideally we should see two entries in the uh, company data, company table so first of all uh, we can see uh, there is a table uh, so there is a database which is restored correctly uh, let's connect to the database and try to list down the entries in the company table good so you can see uh, the data has been restored correctly with two entries as expected so yeah this is how uh, using blueprint you can define the backup restore workflow and then use action set to uh, run the actions from the blueprint all right moving back so let's let's uh, see how this whole thing happened so if there is a database workload you want to protect data uh, first thing you need to do is you need to define blueprint uh, you need to define workflow how you perform you want to perform backup and restore operations and uh, once you have canister control up and running blueprint created you can use the action set um, once you create action set uh, you define the action you want to run from that blueprint and then canister controller will fetch the blueprint and action um, for that action from the blueprint and will run that workflow so we use uh, canister functions to define how you want to perform those operations and then uh, again using can do we push the artifacts to object storage and this is how uh, once everything is done uh, the action status is updated with the required uh, information cool so uh, we talked about canister functions um, there are different types of canister functions um, you can use while building the workflow uh, that depends on your requirements so if you want to 
uh, execute some commands, add some custom logic. You can use kube exec or kube task function. If you want to scale down, uh, scale up or scale down the workloads, you can use um, the scale scale workload function. Uh, there are a few functions for PVC operations like backup everything from from the PVC, restore data to and from the PVC. Um, there are a few functions you can use for um, taking CSI volume snapshot, um, AWS RDS snapshot. Uh, can do also supports different types of object store, um, and then um, yeah, different types of provider snapshots are also provider based snapshots are also pro are also supported by Canister using a specific Canister function. The complete list of canister functions can be found uh, in, the, in the canister docs link. But yeah, I won't go in like in, in the to the whole list because there are lots of functions. Um, yeah, so moving back, like how we push and pull data from and to the object store, we use Copia. Um, we used to use Restic, but recently we have switched to Copia for all the object store related operation. The reason is um, it's, it's more secure and reliable. It, it provides uh, different types of encryption algorithms. And the de deduplication is very efficient. Uh, it's, it's way faster than uh, the restrict. Uh, it, it supports multiple uh, compression algorithms um, and basically have lesser memory footprints. Um, and, it's, and it supports uh, lots of uh, object stores, including S3, GCS, Azure, buckets, and all. So it's a uh, um, it's very faster, reliable, secure than Rustic. So we have we have, we have like uh, switch to Copia for almost all the operations. Um, so for now, the way you can enable Copia for uh, object store related communication, you just mention Copia snapshot in the output artifact of the action. Um, and you have to create a canister ser sorry, Copia server with, with the uh, repository backend of your choice. It could be S3, GCS, anything. And then uh, when you create profile for your, uh, for, for your uh, action set, you specify the credentials of Copia server instead of direct, instead of, you know, specifying the credentials for object store. So Copia server acts as intermediate uh, server between your object store and um, canister operations. And through profile, you will you can you will be communicating with Copia server. Uh, that also you know provides you fine grain um, security configuration basically. Instead of using the credentials of object store, you create a Copia server and use Copia server's credentials in the action set or profile to, to trigger the operation. Um, I, let me give you an example how Copia profile would look like. So this is how Copia profile looks like. You, you define the location will be of type Copia and you specify endpoint of the Copia server and then you specify the TLS information and uh, username password for, for authentication with Copia server. And then canister will use, you know, uh, will, will push the artifacts to the Copia server. All right. So, um, yeah, I think we, we already talked about this. So, um, if, you, if you specify the Copia snapshot in the artifact, um, uh, you, you, you have to define the Copia credentials in the profile, and then canister control will communicate with Copia server to push uh, the uh, artifact and fetch the artifacts for backup and restore. All right, so as of now, the Copia server creation part is manual. We are, yet, we, we are in the process of automating that. Uh, that this is something um, you can expect in the future releases. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, um, New features, new upcoming features in the future releases are, um, we were trying to improve the user experience or Blueprint author's experience to build the Blueprint. Um, 
we'll be adding more canister function to um, to support the operator specific um, snapshot operation like Kate Sandra and other operator based databases. Uh, you can expect more, more examples in the community blueprints and yeah, the, the Copia server creation, which is manual as of now. Few resources you can refer uh, canister, you can find all the canister docs, uh, including the canister, different types of canister function you can use for building blueprint uh, at docs.canister.io. Um, we have documented few sample blueprints that you can use as is or you can modify as per your requirement. Uh, they can be found on uh, example directory in the canister GitHub repo. The Copia repo, Copia docs are at Copia.io docs. And if you have any doubts, if you want to discuss anything, suggest anything, please feel free to raise issues on the Canister, Canister GitHub repository. You can also join our Slack, Slack workspace, um, canister.slack.com. Um, feel free to, you know, we'll be happy to help you if you have any doubts and any issues. All right, so, so yeah, that's all from my side. Um, if you have anything, you can reach out to me on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks to all the organizers of KCD Chennai. Thanks a lot.